Alrighty. I think it's working. You never know. Anyway, welcome to the ninth stream. Putzing along. Didn't think I'd make it this far. Number nine's a big number. Anyway. Moving really slow. I mean, this is nice, but... We have the entire main cannon to do. We'll think of something. We'll get there. Anyway. I guess what we'll be doing today is working on this back a little bit more. Fleshing it out. Maybe making it a little bit smaller. It really messes with its silhouette. The gun's gonna have to be a lot bigger to compensate. So yeah, we'll deal with that. Brief tangent. I watch a lot of SketchUp tutorial videos. Somebody, the channel named SketchUp Essentials dropped something in hour, a few hours ago, which kind of blew my mind. These SketchUp es Essentials made this cool little tool. It's called Stencil by Fredo. You can grab, you can punch holes into stuff pretty easy. For example, we got this. You can just use this tool, grab your source geometry, and you can just, well, bam! That's pretty cool. I like that. Hey, what's up, Martin man? Nice to see you again. Pretty cool. I have a, you're, you're a regular. How's it going today? Do it. Huh. Should just work. There we go. Hmm. I can see a lot of uses for this tool. Indeed, indeed. You can also do some funny junk with it. Like I was testing it out. You can, for example, do this, grab this, move it over. Copy a bunch of times, make it a group, choose that as the stencil. Guess this has to be bigger though. Prefers not to have intersecting geometry apparently. Huh. I think another problem. This has to be in a component. There we go. Very interesting indeed. One more thing. It can come out a little bit as well. Yeah. We'll use that sometime. Anyway. I think we'll start off by making this a bit shorter. Which we've already done that, but just a little bit more. Okay, so with this, with this super motor pattern here, has to have an outlet from here. So we'll make that its own component. And which I've been starting to use more sides. Like I usually just make edgy stuff like that. Well, we will do more edges. I guess that'll be fine.
Ah, yes. Unlucky streaming at the same time, perseverance. Story of my life. I moved it to Thursday because Wednesday was the same time Sketchup Official does their stream. Sure enough, there's a Mars landing at the same time as this. Not surprised in the slightest. I mean, I was looking at it, I was like, do we get to see the landing? Not really, it's just... It's just I guess that is pretty interesting too, though. Yeah, unfortunate. Story of my life. I swear. I think something's following me because every time I do something, it's usually at the very worst time possible. And it's happened enough that it's not an isolated thing, like, it can't be up to chance. I just be, must be really unlucky or something. I don't want to be superstitious about it. But it's hard to ignore. I guess at that rate, we'll just make this double. Here, it's additional outlet here. But yeah, worst time possible with a lot of stuff. Like sometimes I'll be on a crunch trying to finish a project. Last second kind of stuff. Then the power goes out. Because of course it would. Power doesn't go off for years at a time. Then once I really need it, then it goes out. Hard to explain that kind of stuff. And then it starts thundering and all the literal lightning and stuff. Pretty dramatic. Only when I do something. And also, it's not just the little stuff either, it's the big stuff. Like, whenever I'm about to have some life-changing thing, like I'm moving or something else pops up, then something else pops up at the exact same time. Like a major project opportunity or something. And that's happened so many times. Every time something does happen, something else is in the way. I don't know what the deal is. Ah, PC specs. So, not off the top of my head. It has 
32 gigs RAM, GTX 970. The process CPU is pretty good. I don't know the name of it. I think if I go to settings here, I can look. I have it posted somewhere. I forgot the name of the CPU. It's something fancy, something big. Because I needed to render stuff, so I got the good one. Which CPU helps with processing, like with plug-in stuff. But like, running SketchUp by itself, you don't really need a huge CPU. But it does help a lot to have one, just in case. Is there, I'm on Windows 10. I'm not sure if there's a way you can check your, what CPU you have in the control panel. Should be. Can't find it out the top of my head, though. Oh well. So I don't know. It's a Ryzen, I think. It's a pretty good system. The only bottleneck is the GTX 970, which isn't bad in its own right. It's just, it's not a 1080 or anything. Which has gotten me this far, so I haven't seen a, a need to upgrade yet. I'm kind of curious now what my CPU is. I'm going to make an effort to look look it up. I think I posted it on Reddit somewhere. I'll quick look that up. One minute, 30 seconds, count it down. Uh, here we go. Aha! I know what it is. It is a Ryzen 7 3700X. So we'll throw in a text. Here, I'll post it in the chat. There we go. Anyway, what we were doing was going here.
trying to get an idea what I want the outlet shapes to look like. Need to have a specific mantra to them. Not sure if I want that or that. Guess we'll just put it like that. What's going on right here? clean this up a little bit. This has to go like this. You're using a Chromebook. Oh yeah, it's not the Chromebook. Yeah, I stream some D&D off of that. Chromebook. It's terrible. Chromebooks are not good. At least from my experience. There might be some good ones out there. But yeah. I mean, SketchUp doesn't take a lot of system specs to make it good, but you do need some. I mean, for learning, making small stuff helps. You don't have to make it huge. But yeah. Good computer. Takes it places. I think I know the reason why this is up so high. So this takes over. Anyway. So yeah, Chromebook, I don't think I think that'll work. I mean, yeah, you can learn stuff with it. I remember back when I first started using SketchUp. I can't remember what it was specifically. Had the big old chunky monitor. Really old looking kind of thing. White white tower kind of you know those how old PCs look. And it ran so slow. Like, I was making stuff, like, about yay complicated, and I was like, wow, this is so, I made a house, Ma, look at that, I made a house. I was proud of myself. Which, yeah, you should be. 3D is not something easy to get into. You should be proud of every little thing you make. A good computer helps. I mean, you don't need one to figure stuff out either, though. It's only whenever you start getting, like, you know what you're going for kind of stuff. And yeah, I can't imagine being stuck with a laptop trying to do stuff like this, because I literally was once. Had to use a laptop couldn't actually work on this model because every time I do something there would be like this lag like eh and then eh kind of like if I try to do this which I didn't do it like that there I moved it there's that massive lag every time which with the laptop it was like with something like this 
it would be like, yeah, and then it would die. I mean, not die, but just move really slow. So yeah, I can imagine. Been there. Oh my god, what's going on right here? Hold on. So there was some geometry there. So there has to be something there. But does it actually need something there? We'll figure that out. I'm just kind of haphazardly doing stuff without thinking about it. Let me think about it for a second here. skip around a little bit. Or not. I'm trying to think. Because I do know some of these do need refinement. Like, these don't have skid plates. These need stuff right here. Which, honestly, that might just be enough. Good enough. But what does, specifically does this need? Moving around the camera, yeah. Yeah, like, it sometimes... If I zoom out too much, you can actually see it, even with this model, just eh, like that. Eh, eh. If I zoom out way too fast. Kind of like, it stutters for a second. But yeah. I mean, with a laptop, that would be so way more pronounced. And yeah, kind of un unmanageable. I guess... You have to stick with the simple stuff. Just to get a hang for it. So you get a better system. That should go better. I mean, this one's running... Pretty fast, like faster than I would expect it to. It used to run a lot slower, but that's because I recently upgraded to the new components. So they do help. It does help to have a good computer. sure what exactly the CPU has to do. It might beat the camera, I'm not sure. Like so. Because I do know the GPU does a lot. Like, if you don't have a good GPU, then you're kind of not in a good spot. Something like that. Not an exact science. Coding streams? 
Hmm. Uh, well. I'm not sure on that, because this takes a while. This is slow, but you can see tangible results. With coding, it takes literally forever, because I'll be staring at the same thing wondering how to do something rather than actually doing it. Because the thing is, I'm not actually... The way people usually code is they have a very set idea of what they want, and they're just plugging away at it. Like for like a game jam or something. And that's interesting to watch. For me, it's like I'm doing something very complicated. I have some behavior I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to concept it out. And it just it's not interesting to watch, really. It goes really slow. And also, the thing is, I don't actually code per se. I don't use C++ or any of that kind of stuff. I'm entirely a blueprints guy. That's UE Force nodular network kind of thing. Which I'll quick pull that up so you can see. Proc testing. Let me see if I can find it. Well, I know what I have to do. I have to. If I minimize this, will this go away? No. Good. I mean, I can show you what the code looks like. Actually doing, working on it won't be interesting at all. Just fair warning. Let's see, what was I doing? This has to... These have to hook up. And I'm going to lag a little bit here since it's loading up. Yeah, there's going to be some lag. The lag! It's not losing that makes people angry, it's the lag. Like, I don't mind getting killed in a game. But if it was from lag, now that's not nice. I'd rather be in control of my destiny. Already? So I guess we'll pull up some coding here. Like for example, this tank. This is what it kind of looks like. These are the nodular networks. They're just little snippets of C++ code that you kind of hook together. Which... Yeah, so... It wouldn't be interesting. Like, it's just slow, slow, slow. Socket transforms. These are vectors. This is vector math, most of it. Solving math problems. Didn't think I'd be doing that. Yeah. And logic and stuff. That's all that is. Which... Looking at this thing... There's gonna be a lot of optimization I have to do. Not even just make it run well, but also polygons. Like, this right here is not optimal. Someone's going to notice. They'll be walking on this thing. And they'll see this. And they'll be like, why is this angular? Is it supposed to be angular? Not exactly. So, there's going to be after a lot of going around, fixing those problems. But we're going to have to consider our options first. Like, should we make this out of instant components rather than the straight mesh? Like, can we separa separate all of this morphology off into separated components? It'll make it a lot easier to make it destructible. 
And the thing about that is, with that approach, we can make everything else destructible as well. But that's just kind of like, would that actually work though? Not sure. More tests are involved. And also, I saw a problem. So this command structure is supposed to rotate. Like, side to side. I mean, roll. Whenever it gets on uneven terrain. But, it runs into this right here. So it can only go down like 5 degrees. So that's not optimal, so we're going to have to figure that out. And the thing is, the way it rotates would make it so this whole thing is kind of lopsided and if people want to walk through here they're suddenly sideways going through here so it's not sure we'll figure it out anyway off topic we went crazy off topic just like doing that anyway And always delete these interior faces. Which, speaking of which, I'll be focusing on the prototype here pretty soon. It won't have the fancy graphics, it won't have the fancy anything actually. It'll just be representations of the objects in the game, or that will be in the game. For example, this could be represented just by box, box, box. And that's kind of what it'll be. Just for gameplay prototyping. Because it's nice to look at stuff. Graphics are nice. But if it's not playable, it has to be fun. Fun comes first. So we'll do a gameplay prototype in the very near future. We have to do a lot of R&D with that, though. I can just stay. Something like that. This has to come in. But yeah, what I might do is if I figure out something that I see, feel is compelling, I might just do a tutorial video after the fact. Like I wouldn't stream it, but just a regular old tutorial, like how I did such and such. Have to get to that point though. I think we're about ready to offset this weapon. This has to go larger. Okay, we're missing some stuff in here. Hold on. There we go. These guys have to be together. number we want. Cannot intersect with this. Unless it goes on top.
Not sure. The problem is when it do this. Yes, it would. Does it do that anyway? No? So I think what has to happen is... All of this has to be scaled and brought back. And also the thing is with the scale, normally it likes to go from the opposite anchor point, like this. Hold down control, it does it from the center. Do shift, it does crazy stuff. So control scale is what I'm doing. That makes it more balanced. I'll give it that. Problem is now we don't have congruency. Aesthetic congruency. Before it looked like they matched up. Like that, they would not match up. Would make more physical sense though. Good here. Barely. Don't point in that direction or you'll get clipped. Looks good to me. That means we have to offset some of the things. Like, for example, this guy. The man who inherited this bracket over here. Which shouldn't be an issue. We'll look into it quick. Is it an issue? Because this all should be interchangeable. This spine process here. Yeah, it should be interchangeable. So what we'll do... These have to be redone anyway. Making an enterprise here. And this guy has just uninherited his bracket. to be split off.
Hold on. Be careful when you're doing stuff with instance components. Because you could do stuff like this. Throw a line. It has to hook up right here. If you do it too far, now it's in the opposite instance. Like that. So you have to get rid of it. Checks and balances. Looks good to me. Somehow, some way. leave all this stuff to later because there's gonna be, have to be supports all over the place to support these bars we've already got the power conduits right here but we don't have the actual supports just in case this sort of a situation w arises we have to resize the gun so we're saving that till last make the skeleton before you add the skin Unless you're down here. Where it's like an integral part of what it is. Like this had to happen at the same time. All these internalized components. Already? So the thing is, the gear system is interpenetrating right here. Which is good, because now these align properly, almost. That's what we want. So this... Would it help to offset it vertically? Are we allowed to do that? Uh, previous episode. Could this be 3D printed in the future? Aha! Someday. When it's finished. Yeah, I will make an effort to make it printable. Because that's kind of the reason I was just about to get a 3D printer. I was like, because I want this printed. That'd be so cool. To have something like a foot wide. Something really big. Because there's so many details you could print off. But. That will take a lot of work. But it will be quick and fast though, quick and fast easy work because it's hard figuring out what to do but refining what you already have is much faster. So like I'd have to make all this watertight and printable because a lot of this stuff has a lot of internalized components like for example this guy. Can't have that. So yeah. Someday. Not for a little while though. I'll probably be print it off, see if it works properly enough before I actually start thinking about making an STL for other people. I don't know if I mon monotonize, I mean monetize that or not. I might not. Just rely on donations, whatever. I'm kind of, a, I f believe in free range stuff. Someday I'll put this model up in the SketchUp warehouse. 
Don't keep it to myself. I mean, I could do it right now, honestly. But it's just not complete yet. This has to go down. That would take a lot of plastic. Which, yeah, this is the one I'd probably want to print off. The other ones I'm not sure on yet. Because maybe just this one at first. If it's popular enough, I might do the other ones. Yeah, you're going to have to print it off piece by piece. And there would have to be like a big old instruction manual if I were doing it for other people. Because a lot of these pieces are like, where do I put this thing? Which I kind of know offhand, but someone might not. So we'll see when we get there. It's on the list, though. Where were we? But I can't guarantee we'll be in the next while. It's going to be a while. Because I have to actually finish the darn thing before I can actually think about printing it. Okay, that's what we have. Take the hood off this car. Now, are we allowed to make it higher? I honestly think so. Because this should be separate from the gun system itself. So we should be allowed to do this. Like so. So now, we have free range of movement. All of it, please. 45 degrees. A little bit off here, but that doesn't matter because it's already at the wheels here. We have to have a support here. This is what this operation right here is. I think this will do it be a continuation right here. Which this has to go like this. Before we do that, where is it going to go? Before we do that, we have to reverse this. There. Texture this monster would take a full month. Ah, uh, depends on my approach. If I make it modularized components, I wouldn't actually have to texture it. I just have to texture the components themselves. But then that means I have to go in and around here and make it all the components everywhere. The texture, I think, will be more or less semi procedural. Like, you'll just need a ambient occlusion map, curvature map, throw in all your little details and whatever. Like, for example, there would be skid marks on this thing right here. It'd be pretty simple, honestly. But yeah, it probably would take a month just to make it look nice. But actually doing it itself wouldn't take too long. Do I prefer make smaller or larger ones? Well! I have to say, I prefer making smaller models. But here's the catch with that. That's what this is. This is a small model. Because it is just a compendium of small models. Like... Okay, bear me with me here. It's hard to believe that, but... Like, whenever I attack this thing... I do one little bit at a time. Like, I'm not making one massive giant model per se. 
You have to split it up piece by piece. Same with game dev. Like, you're not making a massive game. You're making systems for a massive game. Putting them together is its own beast. Which, I kind of enjoy that too, though. So, yeah, it's... So the way you break it up, it's not necessarily big or small. Because my problem is, if I want to make a small model, it always ends up being big. Because I make it small, and it's like, I don't... It doesn't look complicated enough. So then it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. So I like making small models, but they end up being big. If that makes sense. I can't make small models. Which I think is more of a vice than a, than a plus. Like, that's not a good thing to do, honestly. I should be making small models. It's just not... Yeah, I don't... It's not optimal. Like, if I opened up my models and looked at the small ones, there are no really completed small models. They're all just concepts for big models. So, I mean, if you split it up that way, I guess you could say I prefer large models. This music is kind of grating for me. I just threw in a bunch of random music I had for my brother. Something like that. Got myself skipping around. So, let's see. I'm not sure the math on making gear teeth for this. I know I made them over here. Can't remember the algorithm I used for that. How to space those out properly with the gears. Can't remember. So I guess I'll leave this alone for now. So yeah, making smaller or larger models is complicated. Which isn't exactly a thorough answer, but it's the only one I can come up with. If you take it in a literal sense, yeah, it is complicated. It ends up being too com more complicated than it needs to be. Okay, I've just noticed I'm just spinning this around, not actually working on it. That's how 3D modeling goes. I'm trying to think. The beast's name. Ah, I shall disclose it now. That is its name. Because I don't know how to name anything. Like, I just call them code names. Like... Tangents, tangents, tangents. Like this guy, I've just been calling... Bipedal Mech Number 2. That is his name. Then I renamed him to Brawler Mech. Because I can't think of names for these things. And that's why I've been calling this Burden Beast. Because it is a beast. It looks like a beast. And it is burdened. And that's it. It's just a descriptive term. I think I was about to call it Atlas. Like. Atlas like that. But everyone in their dog names their stuff Atlas. Everyone in their everyone has an Atlas. Every sci-fi universe is like Atlas this, Atlas that. I was like, eh. We'll just call it Bird and Beast. So I don't know. It might change, might not. No idea. So there is no official name. Charlie, eh? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charles. I shall name him Charleston Chew. Okay. 
But for real though, what should we work on here? What here needs a consorted effort? I think since we have the momentum going on this back section, maybe we should flesh this out a little bit as well. The way this is, it has this pivot here. As well, this pivot. So we need some mechanics here. Charleston Chew. He chews things out and he spits them out. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So yeah, this got broken up a little bit because this was moved up to form certain angles. So we'll flesh this out. It's always good to know we are triangles. Like sometimes this is permissible, sometimes it's not. Quad modeling is usually like this. Sometimes you have to reverse these bases. kind of a trial and error thing. And these should not be poking out like this. All this stuff. It used to be mounted like this. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Just now, we're left. It. It'll get there. If I was going for efficiency, I wouldn't be doing it this way. Make it perfect. Just this once. The rest can be... Average. This one has to be perfect. At least make one perfect model of my life. How is everyone doing, by the way? That's a great question. Let, let us know in the chat. I'm personally doing fine. Just moved out to my own place with my RV. Things are going pretty well, I think. There are good times and bad times. These are the okay times. So 
there's gonna have to be a capping here. Capping piece goes like this. But how that fits in with the actual cannon itself, we're not sure on. I would almost say it's almost ready for a cannon, but not quite, because we have to figure this out right here. Cannon will go up on here. He'll aim down like so. And that's how the cannon aims down. He's sad because we turned 1200 to the IRS. They paid me two times. That darn I IRS. Legalized thievery. Yes, could be worse, could be insurance. Yeah, I haven't actually got a stimulus yet. I don't think they say I'm eligible for one. I haven't looked into it. I'm doing pretty well. Well, well enough. So I don't really care. Well, I do care. It's just... Too busy. So this has to... some ugly polys. That's gonna have to be upped in poly count here. Which should be easy because it's just circles. We'll get to that some other time. Live in PR, many people don't want to return the money. I'm trying to think. What is this? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Well, how would that fit in? We have our super cylinder here. Cylinders of this one. Puerto Rico. Oh, forgive my ignorance. What's going on in Puerto Rico? Heard some things were going on there. Because here in Texas, there's a lot of stuff going on with this weather. All of our pipes, pipes are bursting and everything's going crazy. Everyone doesn't know how to drive. There's cars in the ditch. Had to help one out of Walmart today. So yeah, what's going on in Puerto Rico? Divvy this off or something. Yeah, things are pretty crazy. Which I think is getting better now. Snowed again ugh, today, but 
I have to get some hay for the creatures. Hope that goes well. Who knows what these roads... Jake Paul is moving to Puerto Rico. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. Sucks. Oof. You have to deal with him now. Feels bad. I don't know much about him personally, but just horror stories from what my siblings say. in your country. I mean, forgive my ignorance, I don't think it's a separate country. Yeah, hold on, let me think. What has to happen here? So the cannon goes up like this. The thing is, it has a counterbalance mechanism. Similar to these guns. Like for example, this has that counterbalance right here. That's the way the mechanism works. Like this counter rotates like this. Slave state. Oof. They say USA is 50 states. And then they just kind of omit. <laughs> Conveniently. Was it Puerto Rico and some, some other one, I think? How convenient. They want to keep their round 50 number. Oh yeah, the gun actually kind of slides off of this thing right here. So this has to have a sliding mechanism right here. But we don't have the gun itself quite yet. So I guess it would be order of operations to leave that alone. You know what? Let's go back here again. You know what? I'm feeling this. We should do this. Nuclear energy? Uh, it's actually powered by a sci-fi element. I'm calling it Spectra. That's just another code name for now. Yeah, so Spectra, the way it works... I call it Spectra because it's based on colors. Like... Low power is that, medium power is that, high power is that, super high power is that. So it kind of goes like that. It's a sci-fi element. And the thing is, they each have different properties. Like, this moves a lot slower. This one's slightly faster. This one's way faster. This one's super fast. This is heavier. This is lighter. The thing is, they use blue energy, I mean spectra, to power their machines because it has the higher motive per storage, basically. So that's what they use. It's highly compressible, highly volatile. And coincidentally, they, they use it to make it to actually build their machines as well. But to power it, they use this. So, kind of a gaseous element. I want to say it's plasma, but it's not. It has very different physical properties to plasma. It's not magnetically conductive or anything like that. It's its own thing. There's a lot of different rules to that I'll explain in the game. Because the thing is, that's actually part of the game, as in it's managing this spectra. Like It's kind of resource management. You have your different colors and stuff. And they each have different properties. Like, you can use this for area denial. 
You can use this to shoot at things. You could use this for lightning bolts. That'd be great. That'd be fun. Because you could have different weapons that shoot different colors. And different properties. Like this is highly explosive. Whenever you hit something, it explodes. So yeah, and that's what they use to power their machines. Usually the light blue one. And that's what's stored in here. This is the power storage right here. Final Fantasy 7. Nah. <laughs> yep. Actually, that was a big influence on me. Majar. The town that's like this giant gun. So there's a lot of giant guns. Giant guns are good. So I think what we'll do... Grab this, grab this. This needs to be... Okay, we'll just wing it. We're doing it live. This shall be the exterior components. Sixty-four segments. Not quite enough. Congratulations, bro. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I'm not sure what for, but thanks. Congratulations for what, I wonder. It'll get there. It's not finished yet. We can start having a party whenever it's actually finished. Right now it's still in the... Still going. Someday. Just kind of concepting this out. Nothing efficient yet. I'm trying to think. How will this form up over here? I know what it needs. It needs a central core. So we don't need all this stuff. This has to go like this. I like that. Okay. The thing is, this has to form up right here.
Good. Oh, my pop-up sky. So the thing is, this has to be here. This is the central core system. This has to be accessible by the player. But it can't be out from the back. For obvious reasons that I will not discuss. So there has to be a way to get down in here. I'm worried about right now is will the roads be good enough to get hay for the creatures here in Texas sure hope so they need hay something like that this has to come up so this is, will be where the landing area is, right here. Which will make the supports for that. And a separate component. Like so. And I think there will be a lift system. I think that would be the most efficient thing to do here. So they can get down into the core. But we'll do that. This I'm gonna do something like this. The thing is, whenever it's kind of does this Z fighting, that means it's because. Like, for example, this is our instance component, but then when it does like this, they're together. They're encroaching upon each other. So, whenever you draw a circle in the middle here that does that, you have to split it off so it doesn't do this kind of stuff. Because you're working with one component. There. And a lot of times they'll do stupid stuff like this. You can do the eraser tool, control, shift, on smooth, reverse spaces, control, smooth again. So we got our deck here. It's been long, haven't, finally got it. Been talking about it for a while. Now we actually have the landing area. Oh, yay fire. I think what we'll do is kind of like this. Staging area. You'll be able to walk up on here as well. And then the conduit from the front here will link up with this. Because you don't want to walk on this. Get scooped up by these things. So you're going to walk down here. What's this? Ah. We'll deal with that. Oh, that's what that is. It's these things. Do we need these bars here? Not sure. Probably not. We've already got this. Next on the list is this thing. I think it'd be best if we did this. 
central core, it has to go here. Don't do that. And the way it's gonna link up can be like this. Then these have to go like that. Kinda like this. Will they hook up like that? The way their power system work. There's a central core. Then there's the auxiliary supporting components. In which this case it also has these additional rollers right here. Cause this whole section goes like this. That's kind of it. Here's the inter interesting thing about that. Is normally with a human, their knees are here. And they bend their knees there. It goes back like that. Which with this is the opposite. As in it bends laterally like inflection like here. But it uses its ankles to rotate forward and back like right here. So it's opposite. And that's why it has all these additional mechanics to support that. So it has to have telescoping mechanics to compensate. Like that. Different elevations. It also helps that these wheels will be telescopable. They go like that, kind of. Which we haven't put that in quite yet. For uneven ground. So yeah, and also it has some give up here as well, like these are collapsible, like, I don't think we should select, um, like it goes up like this kind of, so technically it could have a telescoping range of, okay, of yay far. Which is roughly 700 centimeters. That's seven meters. So geographical elements of seven meters. A person would be... that's a person. That's the maximum geographical features it can really reasonably handle. After that it has to do a lot of compensation with the wheels. So yeah, it's kind of a fair weather machine. It is amphibious though, so if it can't get over a hill it can go around it through the water. So this is simplified. Let's complicate this up a little bit. Okay. Excuse me, I can't reach my silverware. Mm hmm. How long have we been going? It has been an hour and a half, about. Yeah, I think we'll go on just for a little bit longer, maybe. I 
few more minutes. I think it's been long enough. I think we should divide this off before we get into trouble. We'll get to it. I think that's good enough for now. Missed the Mars landing, I suppose. We'll see. Might keep it to Thursday, might not. All depends on what other people would prefer. We'll get to this. This doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, something like that. I need to tear myself away here. Anyway. We've got the trunk. What other games do I play besides McWarrior 5 and World of Tanks? Well, I used to play World of Tanks. I was playing War Thunder. <laughs> World of Tanks is terrible. I hate World of Tanks. War Thunder is better, but I haven't been playing it lately. So, the games I play now are Titanfall 2... And sometimes, what do you call it? Satisfactory. So yeah, I'll type that in. I've been playing a lot of Titanfall 2. That's the one I play usually, lately. It all depends. Satisfactory. Lately got into this one. Which, I, it kind of like, whatever, I, I kind of stopped playing it a little bit. Timefall 2 never goes away for me. So yeah. MechWarrior 5 was kind of a fad. I played it for a little while and then stopped. Yeah, Titanfall. Titanfall's pretty good. Can't tear myself away from that one. I like the mechanics of it, the movement system. I want a nice movement system as well. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Awesome sauce. I like Ronin. Ronin's my favorite mech. Ion's good too. But all of the mechs are good. I've tried all of them. That's just the ones, two ones I use. Yeah, we'll get to that. 
So yeah, run around hitting people with a sword. That'd be so cool. That's what I want for my game. Whenever we have mechs. There'll be like three different mechs you choose from. I want to be able to hit things with a sword. That would be really cool. Like this one has a shield. He had a sword. Forgot where I put his sword. Man, I know this one has a lance. He doesn't have a sword though. Can't find the sword. But yeah, that's that'll be fun. So yeah. I guess that's all for now. Yeah, I'll call it quits right here. Gotta go get hay for the creatures. Anyway. Hope you all enjoyed. Number nine. Nine's my favorite number, besides 12. But we'll get there. I guess I'll see y'all later. See you later, Martin Man. See you later, Indy 3D. Ali. Ali Bullet. Alrighty. I mean. Let's see. Am I gamer tag for Titanfall 2? If you ever do see me. Is. This right here. So yeah. That's my name. That I usually use. Alrighty. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. And see you all later.